Okay, I had wanted to at first do a video showing how I was doing the enlargements with this, but I'm just going to briefly go over that and maybe do some more in another video. Um, so I made 8x10s, 8x10 enlargements with my uh, Bessler enlarger. I had a 100 watt UV LED and the new cyanotypes took about 45 minutes and that blue flash formula took about I think it was like anywhere from 9 to 15 minutes depending on how dark I wanted it. Um, so like I said, I can go into that in more detail in another video, but for now I wanted to kind of go into some issues I ran into and how to resolve them. So what do I mean by new cyanotype is bad? Well, I'm referring to it that way simply because it's very picky with paper. Um, what you're seeing on the screen is a piece of Canson XL paper I coated and this is what it looked like one hour after coating. Now I was expecting that. Everything I've read shows that it's very particular and usually you have to use platinum rag um, and certain other papers which I did but this can be limiting to some people. Sometimes it's hard enough to get the chemicals let alone finding this perfect paper match to work with it so the next series of, pay of images that's going to be showing is all on platinum rag paper. They're 8 by 10s And I'm going to show you the difference between the new cyanotype and the blue flash formula. I didn't do the classic cyanotype because it, it was just taking longer and it's, it's kind of its own thing. So this next series of, of pictures is all going to be 8 by 10 um, platinum rag paper. So this first image is the, it's like I said, these are 8x10 platinum rag. These are film negatives, they're not digital negatives, so there's no curves applied. I want to see what it looks like with no manipulation to the negative itself. You can do that with digital, with film, you're kind of stuck. I mean, you either have to under or, or overexpose. So this first image was a little um, underexposed. I did have a little trouble coating it too. It, it wanted to oversaturate, so that's why there's some blobs and such on it. Um, the second one was exposed. I would have liked it a little darker, but if you notice in the sky, that should be pure white. Um, the I've made an a actual silver gelatin enlargement of this. It's a very this is ortho litho film, so it's very high contrast. And the sky should be a white color. So the new cyanotype has a, I mean, it is known for being lower contrast, but from this perspective, it's too low a contrast for my liking. It is, um, it, it just doesn't, it does not look right. Um, the sky should be pure white, and it's almost as if there's no way to get, um, a pure white with the formula. I mean there is but it's it's <laughs> the negative has to be perfect for it to work and I don't like that. That makes it harder for anyone starting out to do anything is if every little part of it has to be perfect. So the first issue is the paper and the second issue is it's almost too low of a contrast. Now this next image is like I said, this is all the same. Um, this is the blue flash formula. Now this one was slightly underexposed, but you can already see the highlights are much, much brighter. Um, and then this next one is the was more properly exposed. You can see that the sky has the tiniest hint of blue in it, but you can see the blues are much darker. There's much more detail in, in the entire image. You can see more parts of it. Now, the, the coating wasn't done perfect, which is part of the reason these images don't look as good as they should. But you can already see the Blue Flash formula has much more detail and is much more true. This looks almost exactly like the silver gelatin enlargement I made, if it would have been blue anyway, as far as where the contrast and brightness and all of that. So I'm already much happier with the speed and the contrast and colors and everything with this formula. Now the biggest problem I found with 
either the new cyanotype or the blue flash formula, essentially anything using the ferric oxalate ver versus the ferric citrate was. There was, after it dried and everything, there was an obvious brownish stain in all the highlights. And I couldn't figure out what that was. And it, it's specifically, it's specific to the oxalate formulas, no matter which one it is. Um, the classic cyanotype clears with plain water, no issue whatsoever. However, anything with the oxalate has to be washed in a citric acid bath. A one, they say 1 to 2% had a 4 to 5 pH. I think they're about the same. But anyway, if you, what you're seeing is a piece of paper I had coated with the blue flash uh, cyanotype. I had... I didn't expose it, but I developed it, you know, so everything was as normal as possible. But I dipped half of it in a citric acid, a 2% citric acid solution, while the other side was just rinsed with water, and you can see the difference. So, when you're doing either the new cyanotype or the blue flash formula, you need to develop and put in several baths of 1-2% to citric acid bath to remove this yellowish brownish stain that is critically important that's the first issue I had to solve with this that's what I've been working on so that's the first issue I found and I've been working on and fixed was you need to develop and rinse several times in a citric acid bath and then rinse in normal water before you hang it up to dry now, this is why I will probably never make the new cyanotype formula again. Um, the, the image you're looking at is the blue flash on the same Canson XL paper I tried to do the new cyanotype on. So within two hours, it made that awful blue and was unusable. The, the um, blue flash on the Canson XL works perfect. In fact, it has a little bit more contrast than the Platinum Rag, and it, I mean, it looks great. Um, and then I wanted to finish off with this last picture. Um, this is my favorite. It has wonderful dark blues. It has wonderful white highlights. This is inexpensive Master's Touch Hot Press watercolor paper from Hobby Lobby. This is cheap hot press watercolor paper about the most about the least expensive you can get um, and this is my favorite image I think it looks beautiful compared to like I said the silver gelatin print it's almost perfect so with the blue flash formula you can use much less expensive paper and the most one of the other exciting parts is it does not really require any negative curves. You can simply, and I've done this, I've tested this, you can simply take an image, convert it to black and white, invert it and print it, and then you will get the result you're looking for. You do not need any special curves for this blue flash formula. I do want to end this by saying I've been testing some Dutone and, and Tricolor Cyanotypes, um, which I'll have to get into more later. Um, the new Cyanotype and the Blue Flash will not work at all for Dutone or Multiple Tone Cyanotypes because the when you bleach it, it almost turns a blue when you're trying to tone it. So if you're toning, you can tone new cyanotype and blue flash formula in any kind of toner you would normally do with classic cyanotype as long as you are okay with it being one solid color it's fine but it is not appropriate for multiple tone cyanotypes so that's the that's what i've found out so this is just i'm gonna end it here this is just i wanted to give an update on what i've discovered so far with this formula